Welcome back, viewers. This is Oklahoma Bridges here, and um, we are continuing the story, the saga of the player piano, which, as you can see, I have put back together after the initial round one of work that's been done to it. And uh, I want to talk a little bit in this video about the electrification kit that I bought. And I went ahead and went all out and bought a total automation kit. Um, but what I'm going to show you in this video is the vacuum system itself. And I got this from Howard Gustafson who runs Ragland Music in Texarkana, Texas, the birthplace of Scott Joplin, interestingly enough. And this is a kit very similar to some of the other kits um, that some other um, people are selling online. They all look to be fairly similar. And this is a two-speed kit. And I'm going to briefly explain all the parts and what they do. This is the actual um, suction box itself, the pump, vacuum pump, and it has a check valve. This is the main connection where it's going to go to the um, reservoir trunk um, in the lower part of the piano. And that's what this hose here is for. It's an inch and a quarter vacuum hose and then this nipple will attach and I might have to um, get an elbow instead of this straight end depending on the space I have but this is the pump and this is part of the speed control right here there's a, a trim pot there for one of the speeds and you can see the uh, transistor there This right here is the on-off switch and the speed controls for the play speed and the rewind speed. And then this is on and off. And this is the selector switch that selects um, either the play speed or the rewind speed. So the normally closed contacts are play and the normally open contacts are rewind. And of course he also includes some um, wire nuts and some clips and um, a, uh, a power cord that also plugs into the uh, plugs into the side of the box here. And then the way this kit is set up is everything is pretty much color coded. You just connect like colored wire to light colored wire and um, it should work just fine for you. You can see here uh, the, the gray wire here obviously connects to the gray wire there and on this harness here there's four wires orange, yellow, blue and black so blue will connect there black will there and then yellow and orange connect to uh, yellow and orange in this harness and that's what allows for selection of the um, the two speeds um, I meant to bring with me I have a a motor fan assembly out of a commercial vacuum cleaner that is like what is generally used inside these suction boxes to show you a, a um, an ACDC universal um, wound field wound um, uh, armature motor commutated motor that uses brushes it's basically a conventional vacuum cleaner motor this is a two-stage 
uh, pump, which means it'll produce up to 70 inches water column vacuum, which is nearly twice what the, uh, the little bitty shop back here will produce. But an advantage of that, and the reason why I went with this particular kit with the 70 inches, not that I need 70 inches, is that I can run this at a reduced speed from what I would re uh, run the other unit that produces only maybe 40 or 45 inches of water column vacuum <clears throat> and not have as much noise coming from down there where the suction pump is at. So um, I think as I alluded to in some previous videos, I wanted to sort of um, fake it a little bit and at least when the upper part of the cabinet is removed, which I imagine uh, during the show when this piano is demonstrated um, that the lid will be open and this front board will be off so that viewers can see the action and the player mechanism operating. Um, and what I wanted to do was make everything that was visible from, let's say, the key bed up look like it was from the 1920s, like this was an original electric piano. And I'm sure people have mixed opinions on things like this, on cheating like that. And I myself do, but I just think fig trying to figure out how to integrate all this into the piano to make it look um, original would would be very nice, very elegant looking. But I've also considered the idea of let's be honest about it and let's not fake the fact that this is a, a foot pump piano that is got an electrification kit in it. And so I've also thought about how I'm going, uh, would just go ahead and, and install this kit in a straightforward manner. And also I have in a separate box, when you, if you buy the kit from Ragland, everything is very professionally packaged. The um, automation kit comes in a separate box here, and I'll briefly show you what's in there. It comes with, everything comes with an instruction sheet. And I'm going to put some of this other stuff back away in its box so we don't get things mixed up. Uh, comes with a kit of parts, brackets, uh, tracker bar tubing, a piece of half inch tubing, and a pneumatic assembly. This compromises the automatic rewind function. And I have not opened this package yet, but this is the automatic shutoff. And I'll briefly explain how this would operate. So this part right here is a pneumatic bellows assembly with a, um, a pouch bellow, similar to the pneumatic that's used and the bottom of the piano for operating the sustain pedal. And what the purpose of that is, is to do Let's see if I can get this open one-handed. I did. And what the purpose of that is, is to do is at the end of the music roll, on some of the music rolls you notice me playing, it would usually, there would be the very last notes on the ends of the tracker bar. There would be a dunt dunt at the end. That's That would be if this hole was connected to an automatic rewind, would signal the automatic rewind mechanism. And you noticed even when I played the du the Blue Danu Waltz, which was an original role from the 20s probably, that it's designed to trigger the automatic rewind. So even back then, they had electrified versions of these pianos that played regular 88 note rolls that had automatic rewind and even automatic shutoff. Now I'm not I went ahead and bought everything, but I'm not too keen on how the automatic shutoff functions from what I've seen. I'd like to come up with something a little nicer. Um, and that's part of the reason why I wanted to do the push-pull button here, was to come up with a way that um, at the end 
when it gets done rewinding and all the holes are uncovered, it somehow triggers a pneumatic, a, um, another pneumatic to um, push the button back in and shut everything off. But um, we'll just see. The way this, the way these things are set up is, I'll go ahead and semi-automate it with the automatic rewind and then figure out how I want to do the automatic shutoff at a later date. If I can find another take-up reel, which this being a standard should be relatively simple, probably the best way of doing this would be to, on a lathe, mill a groove in one end of the spool for the micro switch finger to, to rest in so that when the roll comes off at the end the finger of the micro switch falls into the groove and shuts off. Some of the um, what I've read about the common way of doing this is to have the micro switch in the upper spool box so that when the roll comes off and flaps around it triggers it off. I like this better. This seems like a more positive way of shutting off. It's the way the Ampico reproducing pianos activated their automatic shut off was with the micro switch at the back to kill the power. Uh, according to the, the rather good instructions that were furnished with the kit, the commonplace and I've been toying with with some ideas here too uh, on how to do this both making it look integrated into the piano and also just doing it the modern way for convenience and expediency is one one possibility would be to mount this inside over here somewhere and use an extension shaft used on um, old radios and TVs sometimes that attaches to this and run it out to where you have a knob right here to vary the play the playback volume and then a push-pull switch operating a separate switch and then just leave this switch on and then the other idea would be to just do as the kit recommends and just mount this underneath the the key bed somewhere where it's convenient and um, there, there are a couple good places on this piano where it might be a, a, an ideal place to do that where there's already been some some holes cut right here where there was a, um, a um, you see the hole and I could feed the wires in through there and then that would be a very convenient place to reach down near where this lever is at here that opens the foot pedal area to access the controls and have the on off switch here and then the volume pot uh, towards the foreground and then the um, rewind pot at the back there where it's less likely to get fiddled with. I like that. There's a, there's a handle here. <laughs> Okay, anyway. The um, switch here for the two-speed setup is fairly self-explanatory. This just mounts down there and connects with some of the linkages to the, um, to the re-roll switch here. And as you can see, the way the linkage is set up right now, if you uh, move this to the rewind position it moves the tempo all the way to the fermata position and that's what's what you would do there is you would find the right spot and probably mount this underneath somewhere I'll do another video here where I start taking things apart and sort of planning things out so that you can get an idea of how this goes but the desired result though is that when you're um, um, operating the piano with it fully assembled like this that that the automation controls be fairly unobtrusive and not um, take away from the appearance of the piano much one thing I am going to do that is an idea that I've stolen from 
older um, pianos that were originally built as electric pianos is a, uh, a roll compartment light. And I've seen enough pictures of original pianos that were born as electric pianos that um, I know how I want to mount this. And this is pretty close to what one of the lights would have looked like. This is off of a, uh, a Singer machine, and it's really it's period correct. It is to mount this light right here on a little bracket where it illuminates the upper spool box area. Let me get a better view here. <clears throat> Mount this light right there like that. And then have a, uh, a modern cloth covered cord running over to um, some kind of a bracket there or maybe even a plug so that it can be removed easily when the action is taken out. But I th that, that's something I've been thinking about and um, I think would be real attractive. So those are the plans. That, that's, that's the electrification kit for the, um, for the, for the piano. Uh, one nice feature of this kit, a lot of the better quality kits like this, this is the feature, is there is a check valve in there so that if you do operate the foot pedals to run the piano instead of using this, this electric motor here, that it will close off and this will not be a giant air leak and you can operate the piano Either way, it makes the piano dual-powered because of the check valve that's in this um, supply here. So, I think this video is running long enough now. It's it far exceeded my standard for video lengths. This is just an overview of a electrification kit for a pump-type player piano. So... I'm glad you tuned in to watch and stay tuned for further updates as this project progresses. Thank you for watching.